Okay, so in this part of the uh, series, we're going to look at using geoposition.js to actually detect the user's location, whatever device that they're using or browser that they're using. So we're even going to uh, detect uh, their location in unsupported browsers. Now, the syntax is fairly similar. Um, well, it's pretty much similar. We just have slightly less options that we can use. So this is a perfect fallback uh, as well as just using it on its own. Uh, it depends on how advanced that you need to get with this. So if, for example, they're using an older browser and you just want to detect their location quickly, easily once, we can use this as a fallback. Otherwise, we can use native support. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get rid of a lot of our codes. We're going to sort of start again almost. So let's get rid of these two callback functions here. And we're going to have to sort of rewrite them in a minute, but it helps to do this from uh, from scratch using geoposition.js. Uh, we're going to keep this um, this uh, on click event handler for our get location anchor, um, and that's going to uh, do something slightly different here. So we're going to get rid of this as well. We'll keep return false in there though. So what we want to do now is we want to load in geoposition.js. So where the hell are we going to get this from? We are going to go over to um, the GitHub resource for this and we're going to download geoposition.js. So let's click on that. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab the raw code for this. Let's copy this and let's go ahead and paste this into a file here like that. And let's go ahead and save this in a JS folder and let's save that as geoposition.js. Perfect, so let's close that and let's load this in. So script, script, source, JS, geoposition.js. So perfect. Now uh, to get started with this, we need to do something slightly differently. Uh, we need to check for initialization. So we need an if statement here. Um, let's go ahead and pop this. Um, let's see, now let's pop this in here. So here so if uh, now we've already loaded the geoposition um, not library but the the code if you like so we're going to say if geoposition dot init um, then we want to do something and in this case we're going to use the get current position method uh, and we're going to have a success callback and we're going to have an error callback but we're using the geoposition um, code so geoposition position dot get current position so exactly like we did before we have a success callback and an error callback so um, the error callback uh, is very limited the success callback uh, pretty much gives us what the native support gives us uh, so we can grab the coordinates absolutely fine um, so um, let's just say success error and we need to go ahead and create these functions. So I'm going to say var success equals function. And I'm going to say var error equals function. Again, I'm using, I'm not using global variables because I'm creating them within this callback function. So everything will be local to this function here. Uh, but you know, you might want to set this up slightly differently. So in here we have again this pause um, uh, argument which we can take the latitude and longitude from which is perfect. Um, for the error we don't really do much. All we can really do is just say um, geolocation not supported or something like that. So that's all we can really really do with that one uh, which is a shame but you know it doesn't really matter. It's either there or not. So for the pause, we do exactly the same thing. So let's say var lat equals pause dot quads dot latitude. And let's do a comma um, and say long equals pause dot quads dot longitude. And we'll do exactly the same as we did before. We'll say quads equals um, lat plus long. And let's go ahead and pop a comma in between them. Perfect. So uh, let's just straighten this out a little bit. Uh, for now, let's just go ahead and alert out the chords just so we know it works. And then you can go ahead and pop this into the map or whatever you're doing with it. So let's go ahead and uh, test this out. So I'm going to hit enter. Make sure we've got no errors in the console minus the uh, uh, unsafe JavaScript attempt errors. Let's click get location and there we go. So we've now used the geolocation.js library to actually retrieve this information. Um, so as we did before, let's pop over to um, 
Internet Explorer and hit uh, refresh and click get location and nothing happens. Let's try this again. There we go, perfect. So we've now returned our coordinates as normal, but in Internet Explorer 7. So you can go ahead if you've got a BlackBerry or something like that, try this in a BlackBerry because BlackBerry has its own um, native uh, geolocation uh, library or API. So that's how uh, you would do it on a BlackBerry, but you'd have to then have lots of different you know, chaining, you know, if, if this device is this, do this, if it's this, do this. You can either try for native support, then try to use this geoposition.js uh, library or API, whatever, or you can just use the geoposition depending on what kind of support you need uh, and the kind of advanced support you need. But essentially that's it. We've, you know, in this series looked at the basic usage, slightly more advanced usage. There are other aspects to this as well, uh, which you can go ahead and, and, and uh, research now that you've got the fundamental understanding. Uh, and then we've detected support using Modernizer, and now we have provided a fallback or something that you can just use on its own, which is the uh, geoposition.js library. So that's basically it for geoposition and uh, detecting users' locations.